So we have a bunch of different crimp type connectors here on the table. And the first one I want to talk about is this guy, a wire nut. So wire nuts are not acceptable for making wire terminations on a boat. Uh, and for a couple of reasons. It's typically the inside of the wire nut, the part that actually grabs into the wire, is made for threading onto solid wire. But we're not using solid wire, you're using stranded wire. And what happens is when we take that cap and we put it on the strands, it usually just moves the strands around and actually has a habit of cutting the strands. Also, the inside of that wire nut is typically made of steel, which is not going to hold up in the wet marine environment. And also, really, there's no way of sealing this up. And people wrap electrical tape and put caulk and stuff in there. And the bottom line is none of it works. So do not use wire nuts. They are not acceptable or approved for use on board boats. Over here, we've got some different styles. And the first thing I want to talk about is these ring terminals. So I'm going to pick up this ring terminal here. And it is a crimp type terminal. The wire comes in, and we're going to use a tool, and we'll show you later on how to do that. We're going to crimp that to hold that wire in place. So the first thing you might know is this yellow sleeve on here. So that sleeve is for two reasons. Uh, the first thing is the yellow actually tells me what size wires it will accept in the end. And the other part of that uh, yellow is that it's an insulator to stop the crimped area uh, from coming into contact uh, with, any, with anything that's going to cause an issue and besides that ring terminal, we've got different diameters up top. So we can see this one has a hole in it. It's about 3 8 And we see we have some different sizes here. Uh, we can drop down to a smaller one. And we have to make sure that we get not only the appropriate sized barrel for the wire, but also the appropriate size ring terminal. Uh, and over here, you'll see we have this block, terminal block. And we want to make sure, if we want to put a connector on this stud, we want to make sure we're using the right size uh, terminal for the right size stud. So looking at that, you might say, OK, hey, you know, that one is the perfect fit. That's good. And see, it's on there nice and tight. We're going to get good contact on the plate. And the nut will come on there, and we'll have good contact top and bottom. Uh, what you don't want to do is use a terminal that's too big, perhaps uh, something like this where you are minimizing the contact area because this hole in the ring terminal is so big, all right, you're actually creating an issue there where you're going to have less surface area and less conductivity. And the same thing even with this large battery terminal. If I was to use this lug for a larger wire, um, you can see that it's not going to sit on there real good. And even when I put the nut on there, you will find that there's a lot of spacing. And even the nut is bearing on a very small area of that terminal. So again, uh, creating an area of resistance and voltage drop. So the ring terminals. Not only are they available in different size rings, but the terminals themselves are available for different size wires. And we'll see that right here. So the first one we see is this red one. Uh, and this ring terminal has a red band on it, and that means it's able to accept 18 to 20 gauge wires. So remember, we're talking about really small wires in American wire gauge. All right, so here's an example of an 18 to 20 gauge wire. All right, so that's something that the red terminal would be appropriate for. The next ring terminal I have has a blue jacket on it, and that blue jacket is for 14 and 16 gauge wires. So we're looking at something about that size. The yellow terminal is for 10 and 12 gauge wires. All right, so we can see these wires all right, are getting larger in diameter as the number is going down. This burgundy connector on the end is for an 8 gauge wire. And here's a going to the next step, we can see a battery lug, which we'd be using on um, typically when we get below maybe 6 or 8 gauge wire, we're going to go to lugs. So a couple things when we're picking these out, we have different size wire requirements. We have different ring requirements for the ring terminals. So how much wire did I strip? About 3 16 to a quarter of an inch. Again, we want it to fit so the insulation just meets that barrel and there's a little bit protruding. And if you look there, you can see that that barrel just getting in there, a little bit of protruding on the outside. And that's exactly what I want. 
So now I'm ready to take this wire and I'm actually going to put it in the end of one of these ring terminals. Okay, and I'm going to make sure it fits in there nice and neat. All right, and that's about how much we want hanging out. So now, how are we going to crimp that? And there are a couple different styles of crimp tools that are available. Um, you can go back to this cheap pair, okay, and put it on there and squeeze on that barrel, in the middle of the barrel, and squeeze, okay. But how much pressure did this put on there? ABYC actually requires a pull test, right, for these different ends. And a 14 gauge wire is supposed to hold up to 35 pounds. Not the wire, the connection has to hold 35 pounds. So you want to make sure if you're making connections, you're doing a pull test. And reality is no one's going to go get a scale and pull these things off, but you can see that with just a pair of pliers, I can easily pull that out. So if you've got a boat where there's a little bit of tension on the wire, moving around, there's a good chance that the wire may pull out. So those are not really effective tools for crimping a wire. Another style we're going to see that's very common is this pair of pliers I have in my hand. We're going to strip again about 3 16 And a neat thing about this tool is there's a little adjustable spot here and you can adjust it. There's a scale. So you can kind of get the same amount of wire strippage each time. All right, so again, I'm going to put that end on there. And with this guy, we have two spots. One spot says insulated and one side says bare. All right, so with this plastic on there, that is an insulated connector. So we are using that elliptical crimp on here. We're going to put that in the middle of the barrel. All right, and we are going to squeeze. And this one is sliding out. All right, so I've got a good hold on that and I'm going to try to give a pull on here. And we can see that this one, I've got some good force on there, okay, and it won't come out. So these ones are very effective. I like these because they've got a much longer handle, so I can get a lot more grip on there. Plus, if I got a little bit bigger connection, I can push down on something and really uh, get them crimped pretty good.